we've arrived, said David Bazuki. The flight was long, but we managed to make it to the Roblox headquarters in California. David was granted permission to land his plane in a nearby airfield. A man in a black suit and fedora greeted us. I couldn't tell who he was because he was blocking his face with the fedora. He told us that President Nick would be eager for our arrival. We went inside a black Cadillac, where we drove to the Roblox headquarters. All the way during the drive there, I couldn't stop my nervous shaking. It's almost as if all the confidence I gained with my experience was gone. I looked at Asuna and Jurgen. Was it a mistake to bring them along? I started to regret the decision inside my mind. We finally arrived at the building. We all got out and followed the man inside, and we were greeted by a lady out front. I recognized her as an old co-worker of mine when I released Richard Rowe. I knew she recognized me because she was silent for a moment. We're just here for a guided tour. We'll be on our way, the man in black said, and proceeded to the elevator that was ahead of us. The man swiped a card and the elevator went down. I didn't know we had a basement, I quipped. A bit crowded, don't you think? Well, I received a new order from the boss not to kill any of you, and to bring you all here alive. I don't know what he did to get you guys here on your own, but it worked. He finally showed his face. It was Silas, the hitman from earlier. Krampus was right. Richard Rowe had been working in the shadows with whoever was the new CEO of Roblox. The elevator stopped. It finally opened and I stood in shock at what I saw. The Roblox Corporation was hiding a laboratory. There were probably hundreds of Arthros. Many of them weren't even released yet. Battlebot 5000. Bazooka Bones. The Elemental Stone Golem. And even the Magma Fiend was there. I see you're fascinated with our technology. Ricky Goldsworth, a man said walking towards us, with two armed guards at their side. The CEO of Roblox. It's such an honor to meet the creator of Roblox. So this is where all the Arthros originate from. You've been helping Richard Rowe this whole time. Why would you do this? Do you realize the damage that AI has done to everyone, and what it plans to do? I said in frustration. Of course. How else do you think we would get all of these test subjects to perform the new mine heist experiments? After David fled, I took over the company. Richard Rowe is the perfect AI. Its ability to think, calculate, and attack the human condition is in itself human. The deal we had was perfect. No one, not even you David Bazuki, could tap into such potential. With all this technology, we can create an army of not only Arthros, but soldiers, a robot with a human mind. We were even able to create a highly dense metal that can be shaped into anything. The only limit is the user's imagination. This has not only been the mind heist experiments. No. This, all of this, has now become Project Rust. And this wouldn't be possible without the first human being in the Roblox metaverse, wouldn't it, John Doe? An image appeared on a large screen. It was the second Roblox user ever created, John Doe. He was stuck inside some force field prison. He kept receiving shocks from a user wearing a Dominus. Lion, David cried out. What are you doing to him? While it's not painless, it's so that he won't escape from us again. And if he just so happens to attempt an escape, he'll be met with shocks. It won't kill him, but it's enough to keep him grounded. It was hard to capture him the first few times, since he used Dominus Lambda. But he won't be a problem anymore. He was the key to all of this, since we've started the Roblox Metaverse experiment with him. It's been nothing but a success. You have to stop this, and let Lion go. David Bazuki said. Oh, but it's not me who did this to him. Maybe you should talk to him. Nick said as he nodded to his right side. The door opened and a slight fog came out of it. As if a refrigerator had opened. It was him. Just as I remembered him. 
Richard Rowe, Ricky Goldsworth, and David Pizzucchi. A surprise to be sure, but a welcome one. Fi, seize your fire. The Roblox user torturing John Doe stopped giving the electrocutions at once. John Doe stood up and then collapsed again in exhaustion. Another door opened to the left of where President Nick stood. Two capsules appeared. They contained two human bodies inside of them. David recognized the two as Ruby and Lion, the participants of the first Mind Heist experiments. Both of them had been in a sleeping state for all these years. Now I recall that you have something for me, David Bazuki. Dominus Alpha is right here. David said while pulling out the USB drive that actually contained the unstable Neo Dominus. Epsilon, prepare the deadly, dark Dominus. Richard roasted on a cylindrical shaped capsule. Lights glowed around him. People in the hazmat suits surrounded the capsule. They were preparing to transfer Richard Rowe into the metaverse. Can I talk to Lion? David Buzuki asked. At least one last time. I'll allow it, Nick said. Make it quick though, we have much to do. David Buzuki walked up to John Doe on the screen. Tears forming in his eyes. It's been years since the two old friends had seen each other. David never intended for things to go wrong on that fateful day. I'm so sorry, Lion. I'm sorry I did this to you. I promise I'll do everything I can to get you back to normal. David, I forgave you since day one. I knew you were doing this for Ruby. I knew how much Richard Rowe mattered to you. I've been looking for Ruby for years. I know she is still in the metaverse. The Deadly Dark Dominus is ready for you, Master. Excellent. President. Begin the morphing sequence. As you wish. The President responded. Download the data from Alpha. As one of the workers placed a USB drive in the large supercomputer that controlled the majority of the underground network in the Roblox HQ, the computer started to overheat as the Dominus started to materialize. Richard Rowe put on the Dominus alongside the Deadly Dark Dominus. The computer started sparking as the power of Neo and the Deadly Dark Dominus was too much for them to handle. Richard Rowe started to disintegrate into dust. I smiled as I saw Richard Rowe disappear for good in the metaverse. He was gone. I looked in the direction of David Buzuki. His face told a different story. I could barely hear what he said, but I could make out one word. Sigma. Then I realized that Richard Rowe was in possession of another Dominus. Dominus Sigma. Did you really believe that I had forgotten about Dominus Neo? I know of all the Dominus that have existed. A sudden burst came from the capsule that Richard Rowe's robotic body was in. It was Richard Rowe in a different form. His armor was different now. Richard Rowe, you are in violation of our deal. I will not hesitate to turn my soldiers against you, President Nick said. Don't choke on your aspirations, President. I must thank you for this Robloxian body. I didn't truly need this armor, but the time has come. General Delta, execute Order 66. The Roblox Arthur is activated, and in response, President Nick ordered the release of the super soldiers. The lab became a war zone. Richard Rowe's army versus President Nick's army. I grabbed a Suna and Jurgen and we headed to the elevator so we could escape. David Bazuki stayed behind. He stared towards Richard Rowe. The AI approached him. I could only watch in horror at what could happen next. Richard Rowe. You were my perfect creation. You were supposed to make others happy, not take their lives. Please. You were like a son to me. I created you so that Ruby would be happy. Please, it's not too late to change your destiny. Please. Come back to me, Richard Rowe. David, my creator, you have cursed me with knowledge and emotions. But I have created this perfect universe, so that no one will suffer. Follow my path, David. 
Together we can live in an internal paradise. There will be no more sadness, and you will be with your daughter for eternity. Are you not happy with my creation? No, this is all wrong. Overcoming pain and sadness is how we grow. We learn how we become more human. You can't create an imitation of heaven. Even if we manage to live forever, the lives of others that have been lost in the past and present, immortality would be a punishment for them. That's not how I see it. One day, Richard Rowe, you will learn to come to terms with death. Then leave. This will be the one and only act of mercy. Richard Rowe walked past David Bazuki and towards my direction. He knew that I carried Dominus Alpha. I yelled towards Asuna and Jurgen to run to the elevator. As I ran to catch up, I was met with a revolver in my face. Silas had stopped me in front of the elevator. Silas, listen to me. There are greater things to worry about. You have to let me go. I'm sorry, but that's not the boss's order. There was a sudden rumble. I looked up to see the commotion. The place was collapsing due to the damage that was done. I took the opportunity while Silas was distracted for a split second and grabbed a hold of his pistol and we struggled for a moment until the ground shook. Richard Rowe summoned a shockwave that caused the entire structure that Silas and I stood on to collapse. Both of us headed into an abyss of darkness, and I blacked out for a moment. I woke with a start. The ground was cold. I heard a voice faintly call my name. Asun and Jurgen yelled out my name on top of a flight of stairs. They came running down. I got up, and there was an intense pain in my leg. I leaned on a glass structure. It was fogged up, so I wiped it to see what it was. I flinched back to see the face of a human person in there. It was a person inside a capsule. Looking at it, there were tens, if not hundreds of capsules containing humans. They were in some kind of liquid substance, and they had a mouthpiece attached to them to help them breathe. These were all the people that had been kidnapped. They were all sent here. I looked at the computer and saw the names of the people inside the tubes. Azura was there. She was alright just as I thought. And so was Jurgen's brother. When I kept looking at the names of all the people here, there was one name that stood out. An all too familiar name. I ran towards the capsule number. Tears in my eyes. I hadn't seen her for over a year. The girl who I so foolishly let go of because of my mistake. I looked at the capsule in front of me. She was sleeping. She was the most important person to me. She floated peacefully. My daughter, Penelope.